Good morning. What you're looking at is a frame for Yvonne's Straw Bale Garden. I made this prototype yesterday, and what I did was basically just took some four by uh, two by fours, ripped them in lengthwise into two by twos, and then built this frame. After I built the frame, I stained it and then uh, got some chicken netting, which is actually made out of a plastic material, and stapled it to the inside. And that's so when the straw bales begin to decompose, the straw won't uh, fall through the frame. So what I have to do is I have to build four more of these. So I've got my cut list put together. I'm gonna go set up my miter saw and uh, see if I can knock these out. Yesterday I ripped down 16 two by fours and now have a total of 32 two by twos. And here's my cut list for the project. For all four remaining boxes, I'm gonna need 16 eight footers, 40, 22 inches and 24 by 15 inches. So the first thing I'm going to do is go through this pile and pull out my straightest eight footers and set those aside and use the rest for cutting. There are a lot of good reasons to own a miter saw stand. Uh, convenience is of course the first one, uh, the, but one of the nice things about this is that I can set up a 22 inch stop for repetitive cuts. So all I have to do is take my stock and push it up against the stop bar and I'll have repetitive cuts of 22 inches. So now I need to make 24 15 inch pieces and because the 15 inches is too short to use the uh, miter saw stand stop block I had to create my own and it's real simple the fence on this uh, on this uh, saw offers a couple places to attach blocks of wood that you can then uh, create a stop and the reason I put it in this way is that I wanted a stop that was going to be wider so I could do two pieces of uh, wood at the same time. So I've got all my cuts done. I've got 40 pieces, 22 inches long. I have 24 pieces, 15 inches long. And I have 16 pieces, eight inches long. Okay, now that all my cuts are complete, I'm gonna start assembly. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to build the long sides of the boxes first. And that's gonna be comprised of two eight footers and five of these 22 inches over here. I'll screw that together doing a layout here on the table, make all the long sides first, and once that's complete, I'll bring in Yvonne to help me uh, put in the 15 inch cross members that will then actually create the box. 
After laying out all the wood and deciding where I want the vertical pieces to go, I begin pre-drilling for the screws. I'm also using a countersink bit. One thing I did discover was that the countersink bits can be very fragile. I actually broke three during the entire build process. I used two and a half inch exterior grade screws to make the connections. Time to bring in the reinforcements. We've just finished assembling the four boxes and the next step is staining. So Yvonne, when are you gonna stain? No. Now? Go for it. So Yvonne is doing uh, the staining with a rag and we're using our Oxford Brown polyurethane fortified exterior oil-based stain. That's a mouthful. <laughs> It's our go-to stain. We get it at Ace Hardware, and I'll tell you, it's 27 bucks for a gallon. And being oil-based, I mean, it really has been durable. So it's hard to complain about it. And the color, you know, it just uh, seems to go with everything we're doing. Yeah. yeah. So it's a classic. It's a classic. <laughs> I think the plan is to do the top half of all the boxes. Right. We're going to let okay. it dry. And then flip it. And tomorrow I will finish it up. Okay, so, so tomorrow they should be ready, and then on Monday we can, or maybe tomorrow afternoon, we can staple the netting in, yeah. and then Monday we can get going with uh, transfer of straw bales. Pretty exciting. This is the material we're using on the inside of the boxes, and it's basically a plastic chicken wire. And I got it over at Tractor Supply Store, and as you can see, it's four feet by 50 feet. Well, we needed two feet high. So what I did was before we opened up the package, I put it on the chop saw and cut it in half. We're getting ready to install the plastic chicken wire and we're going to use our T50 staple gun to make the attachment. As we rolled the product out, we realized that by removing two of the cross braces, we would have an easier time rolling it out and completing the installation and then once the chicken wire was installed I just put those cross braces back in.
what we didn't plan for on this particular frame was we poorly planned our overlap. So what we're gonna do is Yvonne grab some green wire from her greenhouse and she's gonna weave that through and tighten that up. I just wanted to give you a shot of what these uh, frames look like once the straw bales have been installed. We put these in yesterday and one word of advice, if you're ever gonna build these kind of frames, build them a little bit too big rather than just the right size. I measured one straw bale and as you can see right here, clearly all straw bales are not created equally. So. Uh, some of them were a little tight fitting, but we managed to get them installed. This was the original prototype. You can see this one has been filled with uh, recycled straw. It's on its second season and it only gets better with age. And we have the cold tolerant plants out here. Uh, cabbage, broccoli, uh, Brussels sprouts. I believe that's what they are. Yvonne did cover some herbs last night. We got uh, some cold weather. So this is what the row looks like right now. Two new bales. And then she did a transplant of the previous bales. She supplemented it with some new straw. We took some... Uh, some of the cut branches from our wood pile. We did, we just used a lot of materials to raise the, uh, straw up off the ground. And then this is the single bale. We managed to get this, uh, put over the existing bale with this giant dill plant. This dill plant's about five feet tall. And we managed to get that on without any kind of damage. So here are the seedlings. Let me just show you real quick. In the grow boxes, everything's coming up. Check out these radishes. The radishes are ready to harvest, actually. And everything here is growing real nice. This is our last box that we have available and the last single bale. So we'll have to get one more bale and then she'll be good to go. Guys, I want to thank you for watching this video and for all the support. If you have any questions about anything, let us know. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and uh, ring that notification bell. We are going for 4,000 subscribers and we'd like to get there soon. So thanks for your help. Have a good day.